Stevies, we are here at Tab Performance today, bringing you guys something that I don't think everybody's ever done, have they? No, nope, not well, yet. We're first. We're the first. But we're in Lincoln. They're in Lincoln. Partnering together is, you know, it makes sense. Absolutely. So, this is Casey, one of the owners of Tab Performance, and today we are going to install a set of Chrome 50 cals. It's the new 5-inch exhaust for the Harley Davidson here. He's got a uh, aftermarket head pipe on already, so we're going to get a sound clip and some decibel readings of what it was prior to being zombie, and then we'll slap these on and get another reading. Can I clip this to your shirt? Absolutely. This All right, so we're ready to get started on the install. We're short a few of the tools because we've got a, the guys out at the rally right now putting on pipes for uh, many of our customers. But uh, this is a, a very special deal just for Stevie here because we've got, uh, we, we like to support our, our local dealers and we don't do installs for customers. We don't have a, a retail, so you can go to any one of our fine dealers and have your tab exhaust put on there. Or you can meet us at one of the rallies and we install products at all the rallies as well. So we're going to get started. We'll get the bags off here and then we'll start ripping off the old exhaust. All right, so you're getting ready to do this at home. You've got a 15 for the right, a uh, half inch for your hanger bolts, and a 9 16 for the left hand side. That is normal. The right side is going to be larger, so don't let that alarm you on the M8s. That is a new thing they started doing in 2017. Uh, we're going to put some gloves on, be careful, make sure it's not hot, and we'll uh, get these yanked off of here. Yeah! Oh, you've got a fun little heat shield clamp here. And that is not going to want to budge without getting that loose. Want to see me throw something? I, I do. I do. <laughs> All right, there she is. That's what's going to be going on here. And then we'll toss the bags back on and show you guys a little comparison of what came off and what we're going to. Much easier to do with a lift when they're not all currently in use. When you line up a pipe at the end, is there anything that you go off of? It depends because you've got um, what you're going to find is when, you, especially when you mix and match manufacturers, we have heat shields from Vance and Hines that are used to setting up with their pipe. Um, so you are going to have to do a little more you know, moving stuff around, sliding it. This was about a quarter inch back this way, which then wouldn't have allowed us far enough onto the head pipe to get the mufflers back far enough. So you, you know, when you're working with one thing straight through, it's a little more smooth. When you do have mix and matching, you can usually make it work. But again, uh, we've got some legend suspension, which is a really nice one, but with a fatter pipe, we just have to kind of make sure everything works, you know. Any manufacturer is going to design their part to work with Harley stock product. So without anything, the install is always more simple. When you start mixing and matching different things, then you can run into some stack up things where you might have to loosen bolts, shift, tighten them down, and just kind of everything has a little bit of play. And so sometimes you just kind of have to work your way back. So when you're lining it up, um, sometimes you have a little more adjustability and sometimes by the time you stack everything up they kind of are where they are and then we'll just put the bags on we'll measure and make sure that they're even and they look good and they're straight and then we're done so right now you can see a little left to right when you tighten this bracket down 
too. I'll usually do that last and then I'll kind of get them to a spot I like and then tighten them down. That way they center underneath that bag where we want them. So just a little tip. Now we can show all the, uh, all your audience members what a difference an inch makes. <laughs> But when you see them side by side, isn't it crazy? The difference between a four and a five inch. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> they look so dumb. <laughs> that doesn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> we had actually had some different discussions around it, and obviously, like most things, it was. Uh, one of those deals where about four of us kind of kicked some different ideas around and you know for the longest time everyone liked the five the four and a half because oh it fills up the bag so much better and you know especially when you have the 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 bags for the specials with the half moons but all the a lot of the stock harley unless you're running a cbo this is all more open typically so even a four and a half inch wasn't really filling the bags anymore and so you know we said well what if we did a five inch but we already have issues with four and a halfs um, with certain suspensions and different things. So there's really just, there was no good way to do it. And so that was where we came up with the, uh, where it blows out to the five inch. And, um, you know, it works out really well with some of the special bags, right where that, that bubble starts to, to balloon out um, is where those bags drop. So it really kind of looks pretty natural on there when you're, when you're all said and done. So I do have the 13 inch um, legend rear sheet. Would you recommend these mufflers to somebody that has a lower suspension? You know, it really kind of depends. And honestly, the worst thing that can happen is that if you've got clearance like this, you know, if you don't have the appropriate rebound or whatever, your the nut or the axle nut can hit your pipe and over time it might wear a little depression or a dimple it's not going to do any damage it's not you know we've had customers run ours or other brands for thousands of miles and then we'll we'll go to do an install and you just see a little dimple or depression and i think a lot of people over worry that oh my gosh it's going to scratch through and then the whole thing is going to rust out and it's you know like it's really not as big of an issue as I mean, obviously you don't want it to where it's gonna cause issues or a safety issue, but with with hitting on your suspension, but a little rubbing isn't gonna hurt anything. How long do you have these on there? It says I bought it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Worst case scenario, we'll just install a bolt into here on an L and then pound them off. Ha! Oh, dude, I missed it coming off. And it goes on just that easy. <laughs> You're welcome. Isn't it crazy? That's what a new non-clamp pipe looks like. So are you guys going to start making more exhaust for soft tails anytime soon? You know, probably not outside of what we already have. Um, so we already have, of course, the the slip-ons, but uh, as far as doing a full system or anything, it probably is in line behind the chrome bars that we need to launch. So we just launched the Folsom series uh, prison bars in black. And then 
we'll be launching the same thing in Chrome and then making the ones for the Indian and the on the Challenger and the Chieftain and uh, both of those. So, you want me to leave that out that you're making them for the Indian? No. no, that's fine. You are the owner, so I guess it really doesn't matter. It's on you at this point. That's true. <laughs> Whatever I said, if it gets on there, I guess I got to live with, huh? <laughs> Not necessarily, but that's what I'm going to tell you. How does that look to you as far as... I'm going to let you be the professional. And... Tell you? <laughs> okay, fair enough. I probably ought to at least look semi-professional. Remember that heat shield clamp I was telling you about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried to cheat and go around and uh, found out that that's what happens when you try to cheat. And uh, now I have to take it off and redo it. So you guys have two different head pipes that you offer too? Yes, we do, yep. And there's one that you can use the stock heat shield? Yep, there's a, a two into one into two that works really well. Um, those are our most cost effective heat, uh, header and reuses the stock shields, the stock cross under and performs as good as any header out there. Um, and then there's the, the two into two, which is something more similar to, to this pipe here where it comes with the full cross under replacement, the, the shields. Um, it is a little more expensive because obviously we have to make the heat shields and the cross under and, and uh, you're doing a little more than twice the work. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, unless you really love that true dual sound or the look, that replacement head pipe that reuses the stock shields is, is kind of a no brainer. Um, but there's something to be said for wanting it not to look stock too, right? So nothing wrong with either option, um, just depending on what your goals are and what your reason for wanting to change is. There are some people out there that think stock is dumb. Correct. And nothing wrong with that. Our business sort of uh, depends on that, I guess. <laughs> Promise I'm not hitting your shield. When it's out, beat it. <laughs> Just want to know I'm very proud that the owner is having four weeks of laying on the ground beating on my bike. <laughs> Happy to do it. You know, the other thing that I didn't mention when you were asking about suspension that most riders probably know but many don't is it'll look like that is sitting right by that pipe and have somebody sit on that bike and a lot of people will think when you sit on that it's going to get closer because the pipe is like some fixed deal but it actually gets further away from the pipe with any weight on it right. it doesn't get closer it's the opposite as it's unloaded is when it gets closer but a lot of a lot of our customers will think, okay, well, if it's that close now, what happens if I, you know, sit on it or whatever? And it's like, well, it actually gets fur further away, not closer. All right, that makes sense. And you are good to go. So the one last thing, never put on anything for slip-ons, headers, Anything that's going to get hot without wiping it down and cleaning it first or you will burn those fingerprints into it and you will regret it for hours. <laughs> so let's do that quick. That is it. You want to fire it up and hit the new, hear the new decibel readings? Let you do the honors. So just for the record, um, with the old pipes, it went from 68 to about 112 when he was on the throttle. Um, so we'll see what it does here. Okay. 
So we're at about 89.90 at idle and about 111 and a half on the throttle. Now before we sign out, I'm going to pop the bag, steal one of these stickers and throw it on the toolbox. Of course I did ask first. <laughs> Cheapest exhaust install you'll ever have. I'll, I'll agree with that. <laughs> There we go. Dust off a nice spot for Stevie Foe. That's awesome. So Casey, I can't thank you guys enough. This is one of the most amazing upgrades that I think you can do to your, to your bike. The exhaust makes all the difference in the world. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for bringing her in and uh, letting us be a part of the install for you. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, check out the channel, Tab Performance at tabperformance.com. That's right. And get zombified just like I did. After this, we're going to go take a tour of the facility, I think. Yep, sounds That'll good. That'll be a separate video. So you guys, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you in the next one.